Simon, we've spoken about these behind-the-scenes documentaries before, haven't yes. we? Warts and all, etc. Um, well, the reward always outweigh the risk. The reason I ask, it's happening. We've seen it in football. Now it's happening in rugby. Warren Gatland, Wales coach, has warned the Netflix producer to expect foul language in emotional situations during the Six Nations. So the behind the scenes, they're going to be filming the lot. But Gallen says he's worried that players and coaches will suffer reputational damage if they're not protected in the editorial process. It's all part of it, isn't it? Um, don't do it then. That's what I you mean, get uh, in the behind the scenes documentary. I mean, if you're worried about reputational damage, don't do it. But the point is, is what you're probably seeing now is a closing of the gap between the allegation that I make that a lot of this is staged and manufactured and doesn't represent the real reality. And there's no way Danny Rose walks into that dress, into that into that conversation with Jose Mourinho in that Tottenham one and it handles it that way without cameras being there. You'll see a much more robust exchange between managers and players than that. But if you're now moving the gap, if you're moving the dial away from what I say, which is orchestrated and reactionary uh, behaviour, to an actual natural environment where you're seeing things at their, at their fullest, isn't that the natural conclusion? That's Isn't what that want. what people want? So reputational damage, what do you expect? You expect, as a football fan, you expect to hear your coach in full flow. Yeah. And with that, sometimes comes industrial language. So why would no one's expecting... No, what, what are they expecting anyone to do from the rugby world? Recite some prose, some Shakespearean prose to the players. They're going to be up and at them. So I'm not entirely exactly. sure what reputational damage they'll be talking about. It is what it is, isn't it? Stuart Gallen saying you want to make sure that you're able to protect yourself because I can tell you now that in a rugby environment, when you're talking about creating emotion, the language and the phrases used aren't always appropriate. Good, well, let's hear it. Well, I think we all know that. I, as a manager, would not want cameras in doing a fly on the wall documentary. I, I, I can't see any positives coming out of it for Neither. myself, my Mikel coaching Arteta, staff. Talking about Aubameyang, why I'm getting rid of him? Well, listen, the fans will love it. Don't, you know, it's, it's probably great TV for the fans and everyone. There's, there's a lot of really good ones. I remember watching uh, a British Lions one of some time back that was fantastic in South Africa when yeah. they won the tour. I love watching it. To be fair. If you ask me as a manager when I've opened the doors of my football club to let cameras in, no chance. Why? Because you, because you... I think players act in a different way when cameras are there. There's a lot of bravado there, I think, with players and whatever. I've seen it with my own eyes, the bravado in front of the teammates compared to the same individuals that are talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. Would you act differently? I think we all do. Would you? Well, you show off anyway. But. No, I don't think so. But I think the, the, your example of um, Arteta, his exception doesn't disprove the rule. This is an exceptional circumstance. And yes, he could dine out on it because if Bama Yang was the, was the elephant in the room that everyone now attributes to the turning point about how he would um, get hold of this Arsenal team and begin to prosper. And he was backed by others that gave mm. him the courage to do that. But so, there isn't a documentary out there, Simon, that has harmed the actual club, harmed the institution that we're following. Well, Sunderland Till I Die well, yes. was hugely no, enhanced I, I, because of the passion well, behind yeah, the club. And, and yeah, and you get to see how just how stupid people were at, Arsenal, at, uh, sorry, at Sunderland with, with certain thinkings like Stuart Methvin and, and Donald and how ridiculous their approach was. So you get to see certain things. I don't like it. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. I understand why the entertainment business wants it. But you watch it. No, God, no. I watched an element of it because I had to, to because we were doing a show and I, I needed to see what Mourinho was talking about so that I could talk about it. You watched the British Lions one, Stuart? I watched it on coaching courses. I went on coaching courses and we actually, as part of our curricula, we watched it, the inside track of what was going on as part of what we were doing to talk about it and, and throw it out there. But for me, I can't see anyone that doesn't act the same way with a camera in their face or without. That That's, I certainly do. I, I'm I mean, more contrite about what I would say and what would come out. Even in, in this microphone now, I'm, I'm aware that I'm on national radio mm. at this moment in time. I'll mm. speak my mind as best I see it, but you're still... I don't swear on here in the main. I, I, think I go out this oh, door yeah. and I will. I think they forget that they're there. I think Arteta probably largely ignored the cameras and said no. what he was going to say anyway about that. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I, I also... I mean, I am in the camp of not... I mean, listen, when we're talking about watching a documentary about the, the, the building of a team and the construction of a team... There were certain parts of it that I really enjoy, but I don't need to see in the dress room. You do because you're journalistic in your approach and you believe that every aspect of football should be scrutinised. You would have them having the, the, the microphone in the dugout during games, following them down the tunnel and talk all day and everything because that's what the industry that you're in. I'm in a different side of the industry. Where I look at it and go, I don't think there's any benefit to the individuals, the players and the manager 
for the media to have that access. Now, of course, the benefit will be the financial investment that the broadcasters will put in, which will then spiral their wages up. But actually, to achieve an outcome from players, what I'm in the business of owning a football club with, if I was an owner at that time, was wanting to see the best input from my manager and my players. And I'm not sure showing the world behind the wizard's curtain is part of that. Jim, I quite like going back to the, my music. <laughs> wizard's curtain. <laughs> yeah, wizard of Oz. <laughs> Nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Stuart Pierce. Finish this for me. That was Harpo Marx. Wasn't that was <laughs> Harpo Marx. <laughs> yes. I'm so sorry, everybody watching. I prefer the Mystique, probably because I come from a real the different generation. Yeah. The, the Mystique, you know, like years ago when maybe Spandau Ballet or the new romantic scene was being thrown up. Yes. It was all Mystique. Really? Meet at London Bridge, go to a gig, all of this type of thing. Nowadays, everything's so transparent, and I'm thinking, I'm not sure I really enjoy that. I, I'm surprised that the football world wants it, because most of the time there's nothing bleeding going on in the dressing room, a load of old nonsense. Oh. It is. There are very few exceptions. Did you not do a documentary about your academy? I did, and I hated it. I hated what but they did. But why did you do it? Because I felt it would be a good window. And when I looked at it and saw what they did, and actually saw the circumstance of it, this was 20 years ago before you knew better. When you know better, what benefit is wisdom if it doesn't profit the wise? You don't utilise the same information and use it again. You look at it and go, what did I want to do? So he let the cameras in, Stuart? To, well, he's a wizard. He can do young, what he wants. For young you players. Know? And I thought to myself, this will highlight the academy. No, it doesn't. What they did was they showed all the worst things I'd want them to show. They showed young players watching kids, uh, the, the first team pulling with Ferraris and making it about money and making it about this and making it about everything else other than football. That's how it is. I though. was naive enough at the time to think that the broadcaster's interest was football. It wasn't. It was a, it was a hook for the salacious side of football. Oh. What comes if you do well? Look at Ian Wright's Ferrari. Look at it. I didn't want any of that. Or oh, you didn't think any of that was going to go in? No, I didn't. I mean, I didn't pay enough attention to it. But well, that's down to poor negotiation by Indeed you. Indeed it was. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.